border in the Gulf of Mexico, two hours northwest of Miami. Collier County is home to over 380,000 people, and it includes cities such as Naples, Marco Island, and Everglades City. Its white sandy beaches and beautiful coastal ecosystems, including one of the largest coral reefs in the state, attract visitors from around the world. Tourism is the region's leading employer and primary economic engine, with two million visitors accounting for 38,000 jobs and roughly two billion in annual economic impact. But living along the coast can come with a price. Like many other parts of Florida, Collier County is at extreme risk from various coastal threats, including flooding from hurricanes and sea level rise. In September of 2017, Hurricane Irma made landfall on Marco Island as a Category 3 with sustained winds at 112 miles per hour. Irma delivered a five-foot storm surge in Naples and nine to 15 inches of rain for days on end and resulting in approximately $320 million in damages to public and private property. One of the communities impacted by Irma was Naples K. Naples K. Okay. I've lived in Naples for 22 years and I've actually been the manager here for 22 years as well. Okay, I'll be up in just a few minutes to take a look at it. We were hit uh, pretty hard back in 2005 with uh, Hurricane Wilma. We had significant uh, roof damage, wind-driven rain, um, our power was out. Climate change is making hurricanes more intense, fueled by the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Additionally, the loss of coastal habitat, including mangroves, oyster reefs, and seagrass beds, leaves the residents and wildlife of Collier County increasingly vulnerable to the damaging effects of storm surge. Thankfully, Environmental Defense Fund is working with leaders to address these threats before they become a reality. So the Army Corps of Engineers is proposing a plan to make the coastline of Collier County more resilient. That plan, as of right now, proposes things like seawalls, sector gates, a few nature-based features. The study aims to provide the most coastal storm risk reduction at the lowest cost, but also leaves several communities with no form of structural or natural protection. The plan is broken down into six different areas. Some areas are what they call structurally protected, and other areas are non-structural protection. Residents are concerned certain proposals, like seawalls, could actually exacerbate flooding in their community. Having structural protection from the north of us and to the south of us, all that water would flow into our area and inundate us. Nature-based solutions offer a promising alternative to the traditional gray infrastructure proposed by the Corps' plan. The Corps can more sustainably and cost-effectively mitigate threats to the county's coastlines by combining naturally occurring features like oyster beds and mangroves. We have seen proof that these solutions are successful. Mangrove forests in Florida provide significant flood damage reduction benefits annually. During catastrophic events like Hurricane Irma, these mangroves provide a vital buffer between communities and the incoming storm surge. During Hurricane Irma, mangroves were predicted to have reduced property damage by over $1.2 billion in Lee and Collier counties alone. We can see in regions of Florida where we have ample healthy mangrove systems that it tremendously reduces the impact of storm surge, which is really significant for Florida as we're seeing storm intensity pick up 
as a result of the climate crisis, Florida is potentially ground zero for probably some of the biggest storms that are going to be coming through a region in our lifetime. And it'll be very important that we have really resilient habitats. Along with impacts to coastal communities, the core plan threatens many of the region's wildlife and associated habitats, like those seen in Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park is about 199 acres. It has over 2,000 acres of mangroves. You also have boaters, sunbathers, kayakers, canoers. Located squarely within the footprint of the structural components of the Corps' plan, the park and inlet are of important ecological and recreational significance. As of now, the Corps' proposed plan includes costly surge barriers, sector gates, and pump stations that would harm the park's ecosystem, including the mangroves. In Florida, we're blessed with a remarkable amount of biodiversity. We're one of the most biodiverse regions in the world, certainly within the United States. In Florida, about one in six species that are threatened with extinction are threatened as a consequence of sea level rise. And so as we're going about, as humans, protecting our homes and our businesses and our shorelines, we have to be aware of the fact that we're sharing this space with all this remarkable biodiversity. This would be detrimental to more than two dozen threatened and endangered species, including the loggerhead sea turtle that uses these beaches as nesting grounds. Just one meter of sea level rise would cause this endangered species to lose more than half of their nesting grounds. Along with these impacts to the ecosystem, the Corps' proposed plan could have implications on existing low-income communities. Approximately 130 residences will be displaced by mandatory acquisition, demolition, and relocation within the planning areas. And due to the high flood risk, residents would not even be able to move within their community. This would leave the most socially vulnerable populations to face the most disruptive consequences. Most of us live in Florida because we love the environment. We love the chance to be able to go outside and see beautiful birds. If we live, if we're lucky to live by the water, the chance to see a dolphin or a manatee. If we undertake projects that are going to impact species habitats such that they don't want to visit these areas, we're going to lose that biodiversity. We're going to lose it forever. In years past, us within Naples K, we worked with FEMA to change our flood zones. We've done what I would consider natural things to protect us, so why can't we look at these additional uh, natural-based items uh, than these large uh, concrete uh, structures that they're proposing? These hardened infrastructure projects can adapt over time. They don't provide many of the co-benefits that some nature-based features can provide. And a place like the park where we're at is predominantly naturalized, and so having a hard infrastructure incorporated into the landscape is gonna completely alter the aesthetics of the region. It's gonna alter the wildlife and habitat that exists here. And it's gonna be a large eyesore for folks who come here specifically because it is a nature preserve. If we want to address our flood risk in a way that preserves the natural coastal landscapes of our state for future generations, then we need policymakers, landowners, and other stakeholders to prioritize the right solutions. By harnessing the power of nature, we can deal with the threat of sea level rise and hurricanes by protecting our fragile ecosystem and all who rely on it. All while keeping Florida, Florida. <laughs>